Time Domain Analysis, Part 2.2. In this video, we're going to learn on the convolution integral. So the convolution integral of two function x1t and x2t is denoted as x1t star x2t. This can also define as x1t and then convolute with x2t. That will be the integration from minus infinity up until infinity. x1 tau times x2t minus tau dt. Please note that the convolution operator is linear. In other words, it obeys the principle of superposition. So assume the impulse response here, HT, decays linearly from 0 until 1. So you divide the XT into several pulses. So the system response at T, which is here, is then determined by x tau weighted by h t minus tau. In other words, it is the multiplication of x tau times h t minus tau. So for the shaded pulse plus the contribution from all the previous pulses of x tau. So the summation of all these weighted pulses up until this point is actually the convolution integral. These are the properties of convolution, several of them. So you have commutative property, so the order of the operands does not matter. For example, if you have x1t, convolute with x2t. So it is the same as x2t convolute with x1t. And then you have associative property where the order is also does not matter. So you have x1t convolute with x2t convolute x3t. It is actually the same as x1t convolute with x2t. And then convolute with x3t. Next one, we have distributive property where your x1t convolute with x2t plus x3t. That is actually x1t convolute with x2t plus x1t convolute with x3t. And then you have the shift property. The impulse property, where the convolution of a function st with a unit impulse results in the function of st. So here you have the st convolute with impulse. You will get the function of st. And then you have the width property, where the duration of x1t is equal to t1. So this is the width, t1. And the duration of x2t is equal to t2. So that is actually the uh, summation of t1 plus t2. Okay. So the duration of x1t convolute with x2t is actually the summation of t1 plus t2. And lastly, you have the causality property. Okay, what happens if the input st is not real, but it is complex? Where you have st is equal to sr plus jsi. So this is the real part, sr. And the imaginary part is si. So you will have yt is equal to yrt plus jyit. That is, we can consider the convolution on the real and imaginary part separately.
please go through the convolution table. This convolution table will be given to you. So uh, I'm just going to show you the first one. For example, if you have x1t and x2t, so when you convolute x1t and x2t, what will happen? Okay. So the first one, your x1t is xt, and then you have x2t is impulse. So impulse of t minus big T. So what would be the result of the convolution? It would be x t minus big T, the period. So please go through all the uh, convolution table, this convolution table. Uh, use this table in order to find the convolution results easily. Okay, convolution using the graphical method. So we all know now that the convolution integral of two function x1t and x2t is denoted as x1t star or convolute x2t. So that is defined by the integration from minus infinity up until infinity of x1 tau times x2 t minus tau d tau. So in LTI system, convolution integral is the output, okay, so you will have yt, is the sum or integration of the scale. So this one is scale because xt has become x tau and shifted impulse response. So the impulse response has now been shifted because ht has become ht minus tau. So if we can demonstrate the convolution sum, the first figure the figure on top would be the input function and then the figure at the bottom represents the system function. So what happens when the convolution sum for n is equal to 0? Okay, so the value of the convolution sum is the sum of the product terms over m. So for n is equal to 0, so y 0 is equal to the summation of xm h 0 minus m. So if you refer to this figure, the one on top would be the input function xm. The second figure represents the uh, system function. Okay, which is h n minus m for n is equal to 0. And then the one at the bottom here is the product, which is the output. So when you have your input function is equal to 0, and then convolute with your system response, which is also 0, so the product will be 0. That's why your convolution sum over here will be 0. So bear in mind that your input function will remain the same. Your input function will stay the same like this. The one that will be scaled, the one that you can move, will be the system response. So here, this one will be moving. Okay, next, let us see when n is equal to 1. So we are going to move your system response. So for n is equal to 1, your input function remains the same. Your in, uh, system response has now moved. Okay, just now it's 0. Now your n is equal to 1. Okay, 
So when 1 convolute with 0, 1 times 0, that will be 0. So that's why your convolution sum is still 0. And for other parts, this is 0. So 0 times with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it will still be 0. So for n is equal to 0, your convolution sum will be 0. Let us move when n is equal to 2. So what happened? So when n is equal to 2, here you will have at 0, 0 times 2, that will give you 0. And here you have 1 times 1, that will give you 1. And the other parts will be 0, because times with 0. So here when y is, when, sorry, when n is equal to 2, your output will be 1. So here, you have the convolution sum has been increased to 1. So what happens when n is equal to 3? So here, you will have at 1, uh, 1 times with 2. That will give you 2. And then 2 times with 1, that will give you 2. And at other parts, is is going to be 0 because times with 0. So for n is equal to 3, the convolution will be 2 plus 2, which is equal to 4. So the result of your convolution sum would be 4. So now it has increased 0, 0, 1, 4. Continue when n is equal to 4. So you will have 0 times with 4, that will give you 0. And then 1 times with 3, that will give you 3. 2 times 2, that will give you 4. And then finally you will have, this is 3 times with 1, that will give you 3. So when n is equal to 4, you will have 3 plus 4 plus 3, and you will have the convolution is equal to 10. So here, this will be 10. So please continue until n is equal to 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 when it reach 0 back, okay? So when n is equal to 11, your convolution sum will give you 0, so that's the end of it. So that's why you will have this graph. So you can also refer to, the, to this link it will show you the animated illustration of the convolution integral, but you need a Java compatible browser in order to see the demo.